Is Tennessee all a bunch of rednecks? Does everyone in Tennessee listen to country music? And does everyone in Tennessee have a truck with a gun rack? We'll answer those questions and a whole lot more. So grab your moonshine and your hunting dog. We're gonna unbox the state of Tennessee. Well, would you look at this? It's a good old fashioned fox hunt. The dogs are set loose and then they try to find the scent of a fox. When they find the fox, the guys on the horses will shoot it. It's kind of an elite social status thing in Tennessee and the tradition goes way back in the state's history. But not everyone in Tennessee is a fox hunter. In fact, the tradition is sort of dying out here. That's because Tennessee isn't the same state it once was. A lot of the state's once proud traditions are kind of going away in many areas, which is a shame. But more on that later. To get a complete overview of the state of Tennessee, we need to look at the state from a higher level and then drill down into each region to learn more. This is Tennessee. It's a very long state and an oddly shaped one too. Tennessee borders eight other states. That's most than any other state, except Missouri, which also borders eight other states. As you'll see, the state can be roughly divided up into three separate areas, West Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, and East Tennessee. These are called the Grand Divisions. Each region is way different than the other part, and the people who live in each region all have different backgrounds and cultures, which makes Tennessee so special. We'll begin over here in West Tennessee. This part of the state is the only real flat part of the state, and the Mississippi River is right here. As such, much of it is used for farming. Cotton was the traditional crop here, but now you'll also find corn, soybean, and hay farms around these parts. The rest of the state doesn't have much in terms of agriculture, which is why this state argued with itself about seceding from the Union during the Civil War. West Tennessee is eclectic and true to the old, real Tennessee. Cotton country. It hasn't changed much over time which is why so many people like this side of the state. Certainly not the iPhone crowd out here. Of course, over here in a corner, way down at the bottom is Memphis, one of two blue dots in a sea of red. Now, Memphis is a very complicated place. This is a very soulful region where barbecue is king. Some say Memphis has the best BBQ in the USA. Gee, this is also a big sports town. They love the Memphis Grizzlies, which is an NBA team and they're diehard about the University of Memphis basketball team too. Memphis has one of the strongest traditions in music. In downtown, which isn't ghetto, you'll find Beale Street, which has live blues music blaring until the wee hours. They also hold concerts on Mud Island, a cute upscale area on the banks of the Mississippi. Of course, Elvis lived here. His former home, Graceland, is surrounded by a ghetto. They call this the Dirty River Town for a reason. Munch of Memphis is straight ghetto. For years, back in the early 2000s, Memphis was the most violent city in the nation. Home to more than 300 different gangs, it was straight up thug. It's cleaned up its act a little bit, and Memphis is more of a top 10 most dangerous city these days. North and South Memphis are where the worst ghettos are. Central Memphis is suburban. East and Northeast Memphis is rich, and West Memphis is redneck. In fact, a lot of Tennessee rednecks cross the river into West Memphis to visit the Southland Casino Racetrack and they gamble away their money on Greyhound races. Back to number two, round the final, Ben Pop, the Champagne Cork, Robert Thorne, Kettle, Slate Tech, Titanium. Many great Memphis neighborhoods are actually in Mississippi, across the state line. One rule of thumb for Memphis families, live in Mississippi, work in Tennessee, and avoid Arkansas. FedEx is the main gig in town. Their headquarters is in Memphis. Much of Memphis International is devoted to their cargo planes. Memphis is improving. Downtown has a new touristy riverfront area. It's gentrifying. Many people are moving to Tennessee from all over the country, and Memphis is growing too. And talk about growing fast. Middle Tennessee is home to one of the most booming regions in the whole nation. Much of Middle Tennessee is centered around the state capital, Nashville. There's a friendly competition between Memphis and Nashville, and they're both about the same size, population-wise. But if you measured wealth and growth, there is no competition. Nashville's grown so fast they can't keep up with demand. The roads are far more packed now, as growth is both downtown in the form of new condos and the sprawling suburbs. And while Memphis is holding on to its tradition and culture, Nashville's changing fast, hombre. This is now more hipsters and Yankees than locals. It used to be in Nashville that you had maybe one neighbor who was from out of town. Now it's hard to run into anybody who's actually from Nashville. And that's had an impact on the vibe here. 
It's no longer quaint country music crooning and southern charming. Nashville lost its soul and gained a lot of pop. There's no flavor here anymore. It's like they took the salt out of the place. It's more tourist buses and bachelorette parties and lines out the door. If you're over the age of 30, you just might not fit in at the local honky tonks anymore. It's sort of becoming Austin of the East. But all that growth has been a big boon to the economy. There's all kinds of cool white collar jobs and there's cranes going up everywhere. Odds are if somebody's moving to Tennessee, they're not moving to Memphis, they're moving here. Nashville has its bad parts, in particular is an area on the west and northwest side. The area near Tennessee State isn't glamorous, and the Bordeaux neighborhood just across the Cumberland River is terrible. The east side is all fixed up now. They did that after the tornado came through. Nashville's suburbs are picturesque and hilly. Goodlettsville and Hendersonville are very family friendly. There's a bunch of fancy lake homes up here in Lake Hickory. Franklin and Brentwood are where the 2% live. Bellmead is where the 1%ers live. Outside of the Nashville metro area are other interesting areas too. Murfreesboro is a solid place with great schools and lots of upper middle class families who shop at Trader Joe's and Sprouts. It's a trendy college town, home to Middle Tennessee State University. Did you know Tennessee was called the second friendliest state in the country? Huh, I hadn't heard that, Mappy. Makes sense. I have some dear friends down in Franklin and they're super cool. And every time I'm in Tennessee, everyone is so pleasant. So yeah, I get that. Classic Southern charm. Yes, Southern charm indeed. By the way, Mappy, you get hate mail sometimes. Did you know that? Check this out. It basically says you're worthless. Aw, oh, Mappy, don't cry. Sexy geek, you made my map sidekick cry, you jerk. Way out on the sticks, you have Moore County and Lynchburg, Tennessee, home to Jack Daniels Whiskey. Tennessee people love them some bourbon whiskey. Outside of Kentucky, they drink the most whiskey of any other state. However, ironically, Moore County is a dry county. Down here in Coffee County is Manchester. It's been home to the Bonnaroo Music Festival for the past 20 years. This show was canceled due to COVID, but you only missed Tool, Lizzo, and Tame Impala, so you didn't miss much. Way down here in Giles County is Elkton, Tennessee, where the booby bungalow is, which is where men go to do what men do in the middle of nowhere in Southern Tennessee. Also in Giles County is Pulaski, a seemingly sleepy town. It's home to the birthplace of the KKK. Along the southern border with both Alabama and Mississippi, it's pretty much poor small towns and a bunch of religious folks. It's very similar to Tennessee's northern border with Kentucky, except there's more people with weapons up here. The folks along the Kentucky border are relatively poorer than their Tennessee peers. For many folks in northern Tennessee, there's too much month at the end of their money. Clarksville in Montgomery County is within the Fort Campbell Army Base in Kentucky, so you have that crowd there. For the most part, folks are employed in farming or retail or work for their local government in this whole neck of the woods. And then we have Eastern Tennessee. There's a lot going on in these parts. This part here is where the Cumberland Mountains are, which are really pretty. Lots of hunting and a little bit of coal mining. Davy Crockett's from this part of the state, if that helps you understand this part of the state. Davy, Davy Crockett. In between the Cumberland Mountains and the Blue Ridge Mountains is Knoxville. It's a very nice, charming downtown, and it's home to the University of Tennessee, which everyone in the state geeks over. A lot of them sing the university's fight song, Rocky Top. <laughs> Knoxville's northern edge is a little rough, but the south end across the Tennessee River has some of its worst areas. Fittingly, due to its location, Mountain Dew was invented in Knoxville, originally as a mixer for whiskey. Yahoo! Mountain Dew! Chattanooga's here at the base of the Smoky Mountains. It's the state's fourth largest city. There's a lot of history here too. It's sort of the gateway to the south, since goods could flow through here along the Tennessee River. It had a hard time during the mid-1900s and was heavily polluted, but it's rebounded and it's growing again. It's a little dingy, but they're trying hard and there's some tourism here now. Amazon opened a distribution center in town. Folks here are sort of poor, but not deep south poor. This is also the original headquarters of Crystal. That's a fast food chain. They love them some crystal in Tennessee. Hi, this is Skip at the drive through finding out why these crystal people just gotta have one. Way up here, Johnson City and Kingsport, which are, well, Johnson City and Kingsport. Bristol's right along the Virginia border. There's a big NASCAR track here. The far eastern side of the state is made up of the Blue Ridge Mountain section of the Appalachians. Wild boars, hillbillies, you know, the bluegrass playing, kissing cousin, Confederate flag flying, moonshine making crowd. They make moonshine in bathtubs here. No, 
they don't do that anymore. The technology is way more advanced now. They make it in fancy operations like this. Moonshine used to have a total underground vibe, then Walmart started selling it, and now the moonshine lost its shine. It's a lot of white folks in these parts. While Western Tennessee is nearly 40% black, the Eastern side of the state is 6% black. Down here in Sevier County is a huge tourist trap. Pigeon Forge looks like Las Vegas in the middle of the mountains. Plenty of places to play mini golf and buy knickknacks. Dollywood's here too. It's where Dolly Parton opened up a theme park. It's a magic place, good times for everyone. So come on out, enjoy a day of Smoky Mountain fun. Gatlinburg is a massive, cute draw just about year round. It's a little mountain town where you can shop and eat and drink to your content. It lies at the gateway to the Great Smoky Mountains the most visited national park in the country, people. Well, that's pretty much Tennessee in a nutshell. It's a very interesting state. While the bookends of the state, the west and east sides are holding on to their Tennessee traditions, the middle region of the state's changed a lot. And Tennessee has become a main destination for newbies looking for a better life. In comparison to the northeast and west coast, housing prices here are still low, and there's no income tax here, which is a big draw. It's still very conservative in this state. There's a little bit of everything here. Hillbillies, thugs, rich people, hipsters, and good old hunting boys. It's a really pretty state with a lot of tradition. And even though Nashville isn't the same anymore, it'll be a long time before this whole state loses its entire soul. Okay, so we unboxed the state of Tennessee. I think we did a pretty good job of looking at the state at a higher level, right? Yeah. And we didn't even have time to talk about the walking horses in Shelbyville or Mule Day in Columbia, but we have to go. I think I see somebody kissing my cousin. And if anybody's gonna kiss my cousin, it's gonna be me. If you wanna drink some whiskey, Tennessee. If you wanna kiss your sister, Tennessee. If you wanna see some mountains and some rednecks, you'll be counting Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. If you wanna see a ghetto, Tennessee. If you wanna hear some music, Tennessee. If you wanna shoot some guns and drive a big old truck, Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. If you want to make some moonshine, Tennessee. If you want to shoot a deer, Tennessee. If you want to hump your cousin and you don't care if they know it, Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. A shout out to Cedric Huff and his son Ian Huff for their help in researching this video. There's a link to Ian's YouTube channel in the description. You should check him out. He has a pretty darn cool channel, y'all. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great you should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.